Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and if you haven't guessed already by what's out on the bench we're back on with the um, little uh, dance at Bermuda project and as you can see I've made one or two changes to um, what we had in the last video um, namely I've actually corrected what I've done there so I've got some nice heat shrink on all the uh, mains wiring there um, also I've actually swapped out to um, a different speaker now I don't know if anyone noticed in the last video it was seeming, I mean everything seemed to be working but the amp seemed, just seemed a little bit quiet I, I was expecting more of um, an output from it and there was a bit of a mains hum, now I knew what that was anyway I just hadn't grounded it properly so I, sw I did the um, grounding on it and I actually, it, I spent a couple of hours thinking I wonder if there's a, a bad transistor uh, I was wondering if just only half of the um, output stage was operating so I actually printed the circuit diagram for the um, amplifier out now this isn't out of exactly the same record player but it's a slightly later one that basically uses the same amplifier apart from the tone control uh, around here is very slightly different and it has um, a guitar stroke radio input on it but apart from that it's basically it's the same amplifier uses the same transistors the same components like I said just apart from this little bit here is a little bit different um, and I went back and forwards through it and I could not find anything really apart from a few voltages which were slightly different to this but not not enough to really um, cause me alarm all the main voltages were pretty much bang on where they should be and then it suddenly dawned on me when I was looking through here at the speaker there it actually says 25 ohm now so I was using a 4 ohm speaker into this and this amplifier and you can actually tell by the way the amplifier is designed um, the, the transformer in it isn't an output transformer um, it's actually on the other side of the push-pull output pair there and they pretty much drive the speaker directly uh, through just through a capacitor uh, but it's like I say it's a reasonably high impedance speaker 25 ohms so I took the speaker actually out of the record player that I'd um, had this in ori originally unfortunately back then I must have realized that because this is a 25 ohm speaker so anyway, I've got that connected and I did, like I said, I extended the cable so um, I've got a little bit more room to play about. I was hoping to use the original speaker in the Dan set, but this is its a very similar size speaker so I can't see us having too much of an issue actually fitting that. Also, um, as you can see, the amplifier actually stands correctly now because I made a little L bracket for that side and I've put the um, new bridge rectifier actually on there and bolted it on with the original bolt actually and you know, we use the original fixing um, up there as well um, and that, that's basically where we're at the only thing that I have um, discovered is that that um, tone pot there is bad I've tried spraying it again I've tried cleaning it and it is still crackly um, believe it or not I haven't got any um, 500k um, linear pots anywhere I've had a hunt, hunt round everywhere and I cannot find one so um, I'll have to order a replacement for that but we're going to put this together basically today and see how well it's going to work it's all going to have to come apart anyway um, for me to actually do the cabinet and everything and do all the final bits so by that time hopefully the new pot will have arrived I can just put a new pot in there but we'll carry on for now I'll give you a quick listen to it now I've got the correct ampl the correct speaker connected up to it and everything so we'll uh will power it up now you do get a little bit of a hiss and that is just the true nature of these early transistors they were a little bit noisy but it does still work quite well I'll give that a touch now we've got a lot more um, output from it there now it's actually like I said, driving into the correct um, speaker so what I will do I'll get that disconnected for now Oh, other thing that I did is I've actually, I did go ahead and swap out the um, main capacitor there. I actually went with one with a slightly higher value as well. I 
it's um, a 35 volt rated capacitor instead of a 30 volt and it's um, I think it's two and a half thousand UF rather than one thousand but that's not an issue when you're talking with a um, transistorized circuit like this it just gives a little bit more headroom um, if the amplifier is running at full pelt it's not going to um, pull the DC voltage down right what I'll do I'll get this off the bench we'll get the um, down set case in and then we'll actually start looking about seeing how we can actually get this in and whether it's all going to fit so uh, back in a sec okay we've got the uh, down set cabinet in fact let me see if I can get you up a little bit see if you'll there we go that's better there we go you might be able to see a bit more now so we've got the down set cabinet on the bench let's get the uh, lid up and we've got plenty of room in here to actually fit um, all the new amplifier and everything in but what we'll, first thing we need to do is uh, we'll get that speaker out of the way because we we're going to have to see whether we can get the uh, new speaker to fit or whether I'm going to have to cut um, a baffle to fit onto this one and then uh, like an adapter plate to be able to fit the new, um, the new speaker I mean, it'll be a bit of a pain if we do, but it's not the end of the world. Where's that last screw? There it is. Okay, now that's the old speaker there, let's have a look at the, um, what have I done with the new speaker, where have I put it, there, are, there it is, so they are very, you can't see that can you, let's bring this in. the new speaker there and they are very very slightly different but only very very slightly I think we should get away with this let's have a look whether we've got enough uh... oh yeah yeah that's going to work quite nicely that will fit there and we don't have to um... we don't have to adjust the baffle board that's lovely in fact I can just stick that in with two screws just to hold it for the moment we'll have to stick some more screws in obviously but just to hold it for the time being while we fiddle about with everything else Yeah, we will have to re um, refix the bottom fixings down there, but the speaker actually fits quite nicely. In fact, better than I was um, I first thought it would do. I'm quite pleased with that. Right. So next, let us um, get the control panel and get this in position. Make sure that this is going to work okay. concentrate on that needs to go in there like that now I should have a couple of screws that I selected earlier that will do this the question is what have I done with them I think that one I think that's one
right. And if we get that to line up reasonably well like that, we should be right for the other one. I think is. Let's see if I've got another one anywhere else on there. Ah, oh, yes, there is. There it is. See if we can get this one in. There we go. Got it. Okie dokie, so we've got our controls actually in position. We still do need to do something about the power indicator there, but we'll, again, we'll address that when we actually do all the cosmetics on this thing. At the moment, I'm just going to stick the mains lead out of the back like that. And we can basically now see where we're going to fit things like the power transformer. And indeed the amplifier itself. No. That's not going to fit that way. We may have to extend the wire on the um, power transformer actually. better going further back with it, which we can do. I'm putting that would work quite nicely there I think, that would be well out of the way of everything. Um, in fact that's what we need to check, is it going to miss everything mechanical on the we then mount the mains transformer say there it's nicely out of the way of everything that would work quite nicely that would seem to work quite nicely like that Let's just see if the deck will go in like that. See, one of your problems is there are various moving parts on the bottom of the deck that you need to keep out of the way of uh, all the stuff there that's inside. So let's try, try I'll fit in the deck and see if that's all going to miss okay. Yes, I believe so. Oh, we've got plenty of space between um, everything in the deck there. Although, no, that's a little bit close when that comes down. So perhaps we don't want to put the mains transformer there. Everything else seems okay. Everything else seems alright, but we may actually completely move the mains transformer, extend those wires and put it over there so it's well out of the way of everything else. In fact, that's what I think we'll do. We will um, take that wire off, we'll extend it and put the... Um, let's move that deck out of the way. We'll 
extend them wires there, well re replace them wires there and we'll mount the mains transformer in that corner over there. I'm quite happy where the power transform, the power amplifier board is over on that side, that's well out of the way and all this is well out of the way so uh, I will do a little bit of uh, rework on that and then we will come right back and um, we can have a look at trial fit in the deck and actually see whether this thing's going to play okay so uh, back in a sec right okay we're back and as you can see everything is basically fixed down where I was go I was saying so I've got the amplifier mounted down there. I have had to slightly angle it um, basically so I could get the two uh, fixings at the front there to line up and get a good fixing at the back. I've got the mains transformer over there that's nicely bolted down. It's got its earth on it. Like I said all this will be coming back out. This is literally just to make sure is it all going to fit where I want it to fit? Um, is there going to be any issues before I actually commit to it? So the next thing really we want to do is put the deck in it and actually see if this thing is going to um, play or not and what it's going to sound like so I've got the deck here and again we're not going to fit it properly or anything um, in fact I do need to do still do some work on this deck um, there's a little switch there that is actually broken um, Andy has given me another scrap deck to rob that switch off so I will be swapping it over and making it work correctly but for now I've just wired the motor straight out um, and I'm just going to push it out the back of the back of the record player and just connect it into the um, quick connect like that but what we'll do for the moment we will need to hook up the actual um, pickup cartridge let's move that out of the way for now so we can see what we're doing let me move that out of the way like that and one thing we will have to do is we need to uh, mono out the channels obviously because this is a um, mono amplifier and the cartridge is actually a stereo cartridge that um, I've got in it what we need is just a little piece of wire I'm just seeing what I've got lying round on the bench that piece of that will do so I just cut a sharp piece of wire what we'll do we'll wire those two together and basically we're just going to bridge between the two points there there's my soldering iron some solder to that and we can solder that on that side there I'm just going to tack them on for now like I said they can be done properly um, when the record player is all done properly we just need a connection for now something there yep then we just need to bridge that over onto that side onto the left channel so we mono it out there that'll do for testing right so all we need to do now before we can test this thing is we drop that cable and poke that cable out the back get it roughly in place right okay now we can connect the um, quick connect up to those two lots of wires 
Yeah, one's going to be a lot longer than the other, but it won't matter. In fact, I'll come back as soon as I've connected those up, or you're just going to see my shoulders over the back of this, so back in a sec. Right, we're back. I've got all that connected up, so I just need to shut the... Shut the quick connect. Let's see if we can push this back a little bit. And open the lid. Right, now the deck should actually um, operate because we've got power to it. So you can see that's turning. I'll probably want to go through it. So there we go. So all that seems to be operating. Obviously nothing, like I said, nothing's fixed down properly yet. Well, I haven't actually switched the amplifier on yet. So let's do that. So we've got the amplifier on. we we'll turn right down. But we have got something there at the uh, needle. Let's grab a record. In fact, let's try what we tried last time, which was uh, some Gilbert and Sullivan, because I didn't actually get a copyright um, strike on that. Let's let's chance our luck and try it again. Well, seeing it was Steph it was played on the same amplifier and the um, same speaker, just in a different record player with a different turntable and um, cartridge. Right, and it actually it gives us an opportunity to make sure it actually see if the auto works on this um, turntable, which I'm pretty certain it would do. That so let's even put the uh, put the panel there in position. Let's see what happens. Auto stop there, I'm not sure. But that played that played really quite nice. Let's try let's try 78 on it. Now we haven't got a 78 needle in. It's um should still play. Let's give it a quick try. Because I know I let this play all the way through on um that on the end of the record. We won't play that side, it's got something on it. Oh, that's got something on it there. I wonder what that is. It's cleaned off. Yeah, let's give that a try. So we'll move over to 78 and we'll move down to 10 inch. Or is this a 12 inch? Oh, we'll see in a sec. Oh, that's a 12 inch actually, isn't it? It's definitely 12 inch. Right, let's see what happens with this. Let's see how well it can play a um, 78.
is low tone. Again, basically tone the hits out. Oops. Cancel that. It doesn't seem to want to um, auto stop like that. I'll have to speak to Andy and see if that's a uh, just a feature of these decks or whether um, there is still something slightly wrong with this one. But it does um, it does seem to play very very nicely. So unfortunately I've not got anything else. I've got a 45 here but I can literally just probably play the first couple of bars of it or else I'll get a um, I'll get a hit. So we'll go on to 45 put that on, we'll move that down to 7 inch on there we'll go into auto and let's see if this drops it drops really nicely and that's playing I'll have to stop it at there unfortunately because otherwise but let's we'll put it right on the end, let's see if it actually um, shuts off No. So I wonder if we have got a slight issue with the um, with the deck there. I'll have to speak to Andy about that. But apart from that, it seems to be working really, really nicely. It's playing really, really nicely. So that um, that little bit of a hiss you can hear is is just down to the type of amplifier you use. These um, early transistorized amplifiers were a little bit on the. Um, a tiny little bit on the noisy side but it works lovely um, it's a re you know, it works really nicely in this cabinet so what I'm going to do next I'm going to leave this video here for now because we've achieved what I wanted to achieve like I said we've uh, proved that this is definitely going to work in this um, application um, everything fits in there nicely um, so what I will probably do in the next um, installment is um, we'll concentrate on the cabinet getting the cabinet how I want it and then we can actually build this thing up and um, put it all together and actually have a finished um, a finished record player anyway like I said, I'm going to leave it there for now I hope you enjoyed this little um, update on the um, on the project so I will say thanks for watching and goodbye